going to change it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to do an acknowledgement at the start of all our council meetings now. So we would like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Robinson Superior Treaty Territory and that the land on which we gather is a, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe. We'll um, move into the open session. We have approval of agenda. We have one addition, and we'll put that number two under other business. Anybody else got anything? Any disclosures of interest? Hearing none, we have no delegations. So we get in the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, resolution 295-21. Moved by Councillor Stefuri, seconded by Councillor McGrath, that the minutes of the Council and Committee of the Whole Meeting held November 9th, 2021, be accepted as circulated. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Carried. Resolution 296-21, moved by Councillor Morrow, seconded by Councillor Stafuric, that the minutes of the Committee of Adjustment meeting held November 9th, 2021, be accepted as circulated. Discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Committee of the Whole recommendations. Um, accounts for payment. Resolution 297 21, moved by Councillor McGrath, second by Councillor Sales, that the bank debits paid out of the general bank account in the month of September 2021 in the amount of $39,071.64 be approved and ratified. Discussion? All those in favor? Yeah. Unfinished business. Resolution 298-21. Moved by Councillor Stefuric, seconded by Councillor Sales. That bylaw 39-2021 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a lease agreement between the township prescriber and uh, Coesta <laughs> Cafe be given first, second, third, and final reading and enacted. Discussion? All those in favor? 
Carried. Resolution 299-21, moved by Councillor Stafiri, seconded by Councillor McGrath, that bylaw 40-2021 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a, of a services agreement between the Township Ascriber and Stantec Consulting Limited be given first, second, third, and final reading and enacted. Discussion? All those in favor? Carried. to the Committee of the Whole section of the meeting. Department reports and the Committee Board Minutes. Uh, the Community Economic Development Manager Report. So this is for the Light Up the Night event plan. Light Up the Night will be taking place Sunday, December 5th, 2021 at 6 p.m. at the cemetery to celebrate the lives of those who we, who we have lost. Hot uh, chocolate and cookies will be available. Public can attend with solar candles, ice candles, or any other lights to pay their respects to loved ones. The beautification committee will also be selling ice candles at the event for those who would like one. Want to add anything else to that, Louie? Um, no, we're hoping for a lot warmer weather than we had uh, I was going to say last year, but I guess it's been a couple of years because of uh, COVID. So um, come on out and pay your respects and have a cup of hot chocolate. And so exactly what is an ice candle? <laughs> an ice candle, um, you're, you're, it's just a, a mold. And you put a tea light in there, or uh, okay, so the molds are ice. Or yeah, they're they're. Yeah, they're I've done that at home. But yeah. Okay, I got it. And uh, but so you can get creative with them, colorful okay. with them. And so they're for sale. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to. I'm not quite sure how the committees. I know we're struggling, but we're getting a few done. And it's just the weather's not cooperating. You yeah. got to have room in the freezer. And, yeah. You know. So, speaking of the cemetery, like it says, coordinate layout parameters to create an event map. But uh, my my question is, like, do does the township have uh, a map of the cemetery that shows where everybody is buried in? as it lays out on the ground yes like, yes is, is that something that we already have yeah. I, I wasn't aware of that yeah. um, we have we have a paper copy and we have a electronic copy you know the, the people come into town and, and uh well that's good <laughs> okay um number two senior program coordinator report October for October 2021. Okay, I can go through a couple of the highlights here. Okay. 
the uh, committee re uh, coordinator's report uh, talked about the garlic contest that went on this summer. And first place was a garlic that was 8.25 inches in diameter, so that's pretty impressive. That's full <laughs> the size of a nice mandarin orange, so pretty good. So bingo started again in November. Um, membership, I'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, uh, the stretching program will start again in November. And uh, because there's not going to be a Christmas party in 2021, the extra funds allocated for the party will be used to purchase a turkey for every scriber senior citizen household. So 225 turkeys were ordered, each weighing three to five kilos. So that membership drive will start sometime late November or early December. Right now we have 306 members. And then in the minutes, senior committee minutes, uh, the barbecue, there was some information on here on the barbecue. Uh, the revenue from the 2021 2021 barbecue was over almost eight thousand dollars, which is pretty pretty impressive. And after expenses, um, a net profit less HST of four thousand dollars. So, so lots of hard work and uh, by committee members doing that barbecue every Thursday. Uh, some of the events that are going on for curling, pickleball. And uh, the walking program is, is on now, stretching, senior stretching. So, so we're getting there. So that's it for that. Okay, thanks, Dan. Um, you can do the November report too if you want. That's what you do. We just did. Oh, that it was both of both of them? Yeah, I did the minutes. Okay. okay. Um, number four then, building permits and demolition permits. Okay, number five. What happened there? There was nothing to report on that? No, yeah. it's just a report. You got any questions on it? This report is typically just to show the, you know, just to show if there are any trends kind of in, in terms of uh, building permits coming through. Number five, then, the fire, fire department activity report. Jam's not here. Pretty straightforward report, anyway. So we still need a, a fire permit to burn in the community? Yeah, he's saying winter fire permits are required after November 1st. So you still can't have a fire in your backyard unless you have a winter fire permit. Is it the same charge for? Yes. Same charge? This one is good from November to April. Okay. Okay, that's the last uh, department report. Then we'll move right into uh, question period. Nathan? No questions. No questions. Okay, we'll get on with communications then.
I would uh, definitely like to support uh, the municipality of Matisse Valcut Valcute or yeah, I've seen a lot of other municipalities are supporting their resolution there, and it is uh, it is a good one to support. I mean, um, we're kind of being thrown under the bus here by assessments staying the same. It means that all municipalities are going to be seeing, you know, uh, rate increases um, in order to you know collect the same amount when the assessment phase isn't going to necessarily be updated since twenty. 16, so that's just yeah. crazy. And it may be also, with that not being completed, that you know the assessed value uh, or the tax distribution might be could be a little unfair in yep. some municipalities. So yep. I, I I don't understand. Yeah, I, no, I certainly support that. I read that, and I thought uh, we should be supporting that. But have we heard anything from MPAC on what's what's yeah. holding them back for not? completing the assessment in 22, 23. Like, we're not going to have anything until 2024 now, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. COVID. Well, <laughs> COVID. <laughs> well, that's it's a ridiculous excuse, right? Like, no, it's, I mean, it's a yeah. one-year excuse. It's not a this yeah. long. So, so what does MPAC say about this? What's their, what, what do they say their excuse is? Uh, COVID? That's what it originally was, yeah. Yeah, but now yeah. Is it still I don't know where they're standing right now. Right now, I just I know that uh, we got notice that um, they're not going to do it in 22, 23. Yeah, can we invite them to come and explain their position? Would that be something we could do as a municipality? Like, where are they? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> suppose we could reach out to them and, uh, I mean, support this, and yeah. but uh, reach out to them also and yeah. invite them. What are put their some, employees doing on a daily yeah. basis if they're not doing their job? Yeah, put some pressure on them, <laughs> like yeah, we're, not, exactly. we're not happy. So you'd like to support the resolution and also reach out to yeah, our correct. MPAC representative. And yeah, so I what do. I can do is I'll forward the, uh, the resolution and just... Uh, to them as well and let them know that uh, at least council has questions as to what's causing this uh, delay or and they can at least reiterate the um, uh, at least summarize it uh, in terms of the decision from the top sounds good <clears throat> so, I was going to ask about uh, and the communications is uh, our, our business with uh, R. Miller, and uh, mm -hmm. I see he's uh, going to be busy next year as well. Uh, as far as uh, I don't know, it's I, I, I don't quite understand the whole thing, but. I understand it's ongoing, you know, like... Yeah, he's just uh, stating it's... Municipal it's, planning services for yep. Scribe. He's just stating it's going to be business as usual. He's just saying that uh, he's going to be now uh, running his business under the wing uh, uh, through his, uh, I believe it's his wife's uh, sole proprietorship, so... Um, he is. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, what we'd have to do is just uh, just really administrative in nature. What we're going to have to do is just amend the uh, uh, bylaw in which we've uh, uh, put him on retainer and uh, basically change it to state that it's technically with his wife. And well, like as it states, it's it's in regards to new municipal planning and development. Uh, so. You know, I mean, that's, it's, uh, it's a, it, you know, it's, it covers a lot of bases, I mean, but it, it's not very specific, you know, so I don't, I don't fully understand it. But. Yeah, I mean, his, his service that he provides to us is, uh, 
uh, like land use planning services, right? So whenever, um, uh, unlike larger municipalities, usually they have a uh, land use planning department that's under the wing of the, um, right. uh, you know, um, uh, building inspector uh, uh, bylaw that they all be grouped in together under this uh, same area. And for us, because we're smaller, we, we get um, land use planning issues happening fairly, you know, uh, they're not quite quite so common. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to right, have a, uh, a full-time employee as a planner, so we reach out to uh, right. Uh, Mr. Miller for planning services and borrow his expertise mm -hmm. based on a monthly retainer. Okay. So no change in the fee structure. So. No. No. Just purely administrative yeah, in nature. Okay. okay. I don't see anything else in there. Everybody else is good with it. We'll move. Uh, we don't have any unfinished biz business, so we'll move right on to other business. And uh, number one is the uh, Christmas office closure. So we have stat holidays on the 27th and 28th. So really, the closure would be from the 29th. 30th and 31st, those three days at the end of December. And then you would be off, obviously, the first, second, and the third, back on the fourth. Back on the third, oh yeah, back on the fourth. Yeah. So 29th, 30th, 31st. And then yep. they get a Lou Day for the first being on Saturday. So back yep. on the 4th, 4th of January. Mm. 2022. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't see uh, I don't see a problem with if people are got time saved for it and whatnot. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the add-on was uh, the. Uh, uh, Grant and aid application for the Lake Superior High School's uh, student council. You gonna take that, Nathan? Yeah, in terms of the in terms of the request, I believe um, this was something that was uh, approved in the past um, before. I don't know if you can recall how many years ago this was, CEO. Mm, wrong. Probably. It's been a while, eh? Pre-COVID. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, and generally, in, in, in terms of how this would work, right, if this would be the students doing it, uh, we'd make sure we have someone that's uh, 18 and older who's signing all the uh, agreements for the rental. As for uh, the use of the hall, right, that's we've opened it up and we're following uh, uh, provincial regulations. I support it. I think it's... So 75 people that falls within the regulations? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, me too. So the grant and aid is for Three oh four seventy yeah. or something. Yeah. Three hundred and four dollars and seventy cents. Which is the only grant and aid application this year. Yeah, so I was gonna say it must be the only one. Yeah. Right? I mean I, I 
I'm for it, but I, I, I want to see their list of uh, chaperones, too. And you can, I mean, if they're following all the COVID rules and, and what whatnot, I know you wanted somebody over 18 to uh, to sign everything, but uh, I mean, they've gotten out of hand late in, in the past too. Yeah, there's certainly going to be so, a lot more responsibility this time, um, just because of the whole. COVID policies on top of everything, right? So, so is this a, a school sanctioned event? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, would there not be teachers involved? That no, I don't, I don't, the teachers don't want anything to do with it. They don't want anything to do with it. So yeah. then the school really has nothing to do with it. Well, then it's not a, then it's not a school event. Yeah. Then it's, it's not, really then it's not student system. council. It's got to be a, a, a LSC. The teachers must be involved in some capacity if it's a student council. Well, I, I think we better check yeah, in. I, I think it's we need to do our due diligence for sure. And see who's looking, who the adults are going to be in the room. Well, it's definitely got to be. It's got to be because yeah. you know you, we were all young once. <laughs> you know what happens. So you'd like to see a list of the chaperones. Well, I'd like, to, like, is it a, is it a school event? Is it are the teachers going to be part of the? I don't know if you want to call it chaperoning, but. Uh, taking care of it uh, or who's who's going to be the responsible adults typically it's parents typically the school has nothing to do with it parents, no even even yeah, at that, that yeah, parents, even, parents even will at be that, the chaperones okay. even at that that would be good but yeah we would love to know that they're going going to be there yeah i agree this is something that can't take place at the school in Terrace Bay. Right. According to that. <clears throat> and just dig into it a little further, that's all. So in terms of the uh, granting aid, did you want to revisit this or? Well, I'd say yes. I'm I'm good with the grant. Yeah, I'm good with the grant. Yeah, I'm good with that. But I just want some accountability right. when if something goes south. Prior to us, uh, would you say uh, getting the uh, these agreements signed, and we'll make sure that we uh, get that list of uh, chaperones that I can send to. Well, I mean, on the rec hall council. rental form, don't you have to have a couple of names? Yep. Like I remember parent, renting yeah. it for a shade yep. and there was at least three adults. Yeah, a parent, I will, have have a parent will have to sign the application. Yeah. <clears throat> and and there's like another person in case that person is like, yeah. they're going to need uh, somebody, somebody, somebody responsible. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be, they're signing on the dotted line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, um, now is our last item for other business, so that's it for the meeting, actually. Resolution 300-21, moved by Councillor Morrow, seconded by Councillor Stapiric, that the meeting now adjourn at 7.30 p.m. Yeah.